Hi, good days, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, students. How are you? Uh, we are back. And uh, this time, today, I'm going to record a series of video about uh, the introduction to classes and object. Okay. Classes and object where this is when we start, uh, we will start talking very much about uh, object oriented programming. Okay. So, um, as you know, okay, from the slides that, um, that is in the Google Drive, uh, there is a chapter called chapter 3-2, right? Which is uh, classes, objects, and string. As you can see on screen right now, okay? And here are the slides uh, explaining in detail what they are, uh, basically textbook, textbook materials that you can, you can read. And they, they even give like um, a transition of how you can do this from the normal structure. Yeah, this is the structure, okay? And how uh, it is beneficial to understand structure before you understand class and object, okay? And there is a, a good example of class grade book uh, in the slide that you can learn step by step every slide. But uh, today, today, uh, I mean, I mean, in this uh, YouTube videos, I'm going to show you another example because uh, the example given to you in the slides, you can um, you can do it yourself. You can replicate them, and you can try it out in the compiler yourself and see how it works, right? But then I'm going to give you another example, uh, and we will program uh, the program live and show you step by step how it is being done. Okay, so uh, let's get to it. And whatever in the slides, uh, you should read and understand. Okay, uh, especially all the textual material, just for a better understanding. Okay, uh, other than that, okay, let's go straight and ex let me explain to you how class and objects uh, works. Okay, so. We go back to our favorite online compiler here, right? Uh, before that, let me just uh, close these few windows. Okay, so as you can see, right? Okay, here is our compiler. Okay, and let's uh, put it away and make the space bigger. Okay, all right. So as usual, I'm gonna include IO stream. Okay, by now you should be you should be familiar with using namespace std, right? And of course we have a void. Sorry, we have a. Uh, this is on the integer main. Okay, and we have two semicolon and return zero. Okay, so here it is. This is our basic structure here. All right. Okay. So, uh, if you recall, the last time we have done something like this, struct, uh, say, uh, proct2, okay, uh, and I have this, and remember, we have something like a name in our previous uh, video, string name, we have, uh, I think we have a float uh, quiz, right? Okay, and then maybe we have a float midterm and we have uh, integer h. Okay, so as you can see in structures, we can actually combine um, several um, variables or identifiers in a single structure where uh, every structure variable can be able to access multiple data. So like, for example, in my class, I have a 70 of you, okay, mm -hmm. students, 70 students, right? And uh, each one of you will have uh, four different parameters that I will need to store your data with, which is name, quiz, midterm, and age. Of course, I can do it with separate arrays, but I think we have discussed that in previous videos, why it is more practical for us, for, for us to use uh, structure. Okay, and in the structure, uh, you can have one student and it can access to uh, name quiz midterm h then student number two can have its own name quiz midterm h number three student number four and so on okay uh in that uh that being said all right that being said um you can access all these um variables using the dot operator and if it is a pointer then you can actually use the arrow okay now we will move on to discussing about class and object okay Class works very much similar in terms of uh, the syntax, uh, like the structure, 
okay with a couple of exception okay number one okay a class not only can store data which is uh, data members which is name quiz midterm and age but it can also have uh, a specific set of functions in the class okay i'm going to show you in a while how it works specific functions that works only for the class okay only the function that functions that only work for the class uh, and besides that it has what we call the uh, access specifier of uh, three different uh, access public private and protected uh, in this series we will be talking about public and private first uh, how it works right and the other thing is that when we talk about class okay um, the structure will create structure variable and the class will create objects and we will move on to the last part of this series where we will talk about constructors later on on how uh, it works okay so let's transform this okay into what we call a struct okay so you know that if we use a structure okay we have struct proc2 string name quiz and we can actually declare a new structure variable by using struct then proc2 and then i can put student1 or stud1 make sense and you can have stud1 dot name okay and so on dot quiz dot midterm and dot h okay as simple as that you, you i hope you're clear with that right now okay now i'm going to create a class how very simple just change struct to class okay proc2 then i have string name i have float quiz float midterm integer h right and the only difference that we have here okay is that I'm going to add something here called public. Okay, public. If I do not put public, you have to know that by default, this will all be private. Okay, this will all be private. If I put public, everything below this, uh, the line number six will be public. If I put private, everything below line number six will be private. If I don't put anything, by default, it is private. Okay? So for now, I'm going to put here public. Right? String name, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to run a very simple program here. So first, what we do is we create an object from the class. Okay? We can create many, many objects from the class. Okay, not only one. So it's like a structure. You can create many structure variables. Same thing for class. You can have, uh, you can have many, many different objects that is created out of the class. Okay. Imagine a class like a template and the object is the actual, uh, actual item or object that is being created. Like for example, um, you guys love cars. I hope you love cars, right? You know that every single car they will have a blueprint blueprint as is as in plan drawings on how the car is supposed to be constructed the processes of how it is supposed to be constructed okay so that's basically a class all right so you have the blueprint of the car you have the measurement of the car all on paper right so the door is going to be this dimension and it is how many cm over how many cm and you have the bonnet uh, you have the engine the engine is supposed to be 1.6 uh, horse, uh, uh, certain horsepower is it turbo is it not turbo okay how many color choices do you have and you have all these templates the rules okay of creating a car right and you also have the processes like for example if you want to assemble a car you need to have a function okay where you have the body of the car created and then next process is to assemble the four doors okay step by step uh, which is basically the function so that's class and what are objects? Objects are basically the actual car, the actual car that is created uh, in that sense. Okay, so I'm gonna put here, uh, I'm gonna show you how to create an object. It's very simple. The name of the class is PROC2. Therefore you use PROC2. And I'm gonna create the first object. It's called STAT1. All right, so that's 10 minutes. I think uh, finishing soon. I'll see you in the next video to continue this.